Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I want to show you how to use insecticidal soap and how to make your own. Now, I first want to say I am not a person who advocates for um, using pesticides like at all. I don't spray any pesticides in my garden and uh, that's the bottom line. I generally don't have huge issues with bugs and I think that is because I really focus on biological diversity and my plantings. Um, I you know try really hard to never plant a monoculture that would result in you know a problem insect infestation. But the reality is every now and again you end up with you know say a whole bunch of aphids or you know mealybugs or scale or whitefly and you know you need to you know knock their numbers down so that they don't overwhelm your crops. So my number one tip for reducing problem insect infestations is to lower your rate of fertilizer. The number one thing that insects are coming to is that flush of new growth that's full of sugar. And that's generally um, directly related to using too much nitrogen, um, a, ni a fertilizer that has too high of a rate of nitrogen. So again, going back to sort of best practices, I always recommend that you use an organic slow release fertilizer, something like Dr. Earth, Dr. Earth Organics, that have all the ratios of NPK below the number 10. Um, most plants don't have the ability to absorb uh, you know, fertilizer numbers higher than 10, so a lot of that just ends up getting washed away, particularly your container plants where you're watering daily and that fertilizer is leaching through your soil base. So to avoid past number one solution, plant more biological diversity. Number two, lower your rate of fertilizer. Now, if you still are having pest infestations, the easiest solution is to just knock down the insects using insecticidal soap, which is, um, you know, organic. Um, it's, uh, you know, this controls aphids, mealybugs, mites, leafhoppers, psyllids, scale, thrips, whiteflies, uh, and other listed pests. And it's for use on vegetables, fruit trees, ornamentals, shrubs, flowers, and just general garden plants. So this is a really great, safe um, approach. This is not precautionary. This is not preventative. This is something that you apply as a reaction. When you see the bugs, you're literally just gonna spray them. Now you can buy this, it's really inexpensive. And you know, honestly, in my gardening experience, I probably only use like a 10th of this bottle in a single year. But if you have a lot of problem insects, first, I want to encourage you to reevaluate your practices because if you're having massive aphid infestations, there's probably something else at play. Uh, but you can also make your own. So if you need to have like gallons and gallons of insecticidal soap, you can actually just, you know, buy pure Castile soap. This actually, for me, is found in the shampoo aisle, not the like dishwashing aisle. And basically you're just gonna mix this one tablespoon per one quart of water in just any kind of spray bottle that you need. Or if you have a huge problem, you might be putting it in like a gallon backpack sprayer or something. So yeah, insecticidal soap is a really easy solution for knocking down problem insects. Now I had wanted to actually show this in action, but I don't have any bugs to spray right now. And that's a testament to just sort of letting nature take its course. About three weeks ago, I noticed aphids on my barley and that spurred me in a garden tour to say, oh, I need to show you how to make insecticidal soap. But here we are and there's no aphids on the barley anymore and I didn't do anything. So that's actually a really important lesson to learn. Often you should just evaluate, is that bug actually causing a problem for my harvest? Or is it just something that I don't like to see? And if it's the latter, my recommendation is to just, you know, take a step back, let nature take its course. Those aphids or mealybugs or whiteflies are actually gonna be food for a beneficial insect. And then you don't have to interrupt the cycle at all. And that's really my goal as a home gardener and as a professional horticulturalist to encourage people to not like 
jump to worst case scenarios and you know think oh my gosh that that aphid is gonna make it so i don't ever have a tomato to harvest it's actually not accurate at all um obviously if you have you know a massive infestation it's to your advantage to go ahead and treat it but most often you know the insects that home gardeners are facing are really kind of best not for you to do anything to and let other insects come in and, and do their jobs as, as part of the cycle of life. So, um, yeah, my, my, my real lesson in this, in this video isn't to encourage you to go out and kill every bug that you see. That's actually not a, a good solution at all. It's more for you to pay attention to life cycles and, you know, reduce your fertilizer and you know grow with biological diversity in mind so that you never really have problem bugs to begin with so maybe cubby chased all the aphids away here are the pots of barley that had aphids a few weeks ago but you can see there's no aphids on them now at all so there's nothing for me to spray so sorry this video is kind of lame now i will say there's a donut hole in the middle of this pot and that's from my little cat, Ava Grace, sitting in there nibbling on the barley leaves. And the same thing is over here on this barley. And this had a few aphids on it a few weeks ago, but again, there's no insects now, and I didn't do anything. Uh, you know, I really think there's a lot to be said for not doing anything. But there is a donut hole in there, and that's from her sitting there. And then I have all of these other grains. This is from my grain experience experiment that is going to take place down um, at Johnson Nursery in June and there's no insects on any of these grains as well so as I've scoured around my garden I I literally don't have any bugs to spray so I hope that will be a lesson for everyone biological diversity lower your rates of fertilizer and ultimately your pest problems will be significantly less Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. <laughs> I'm out here trying to make a video about how to use insecticidal soap and I don't have any insects to spray. <laughs> there you have it. <laughs> well, I hope you found this video to be helpful. Um, you know, like I said, I'm an organic gardener and though I was trained in traditional horticulture and when I was studying entomology 20 years ago, it was all about killing insects. We are definitely living in a different time now where we are recognizing the role that all the different bugs play. And I want to encourage you to not overreact when you see a pest and you know at least give it a, a, a few days or a week before you go out and kill them because uh, sometimes those pests will actually bring in good bugs that will make your job as a gardener easier. Well, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Happy gardening.